Hey, we're Danny and Essie, and we've been using the spot-on GPS fence for our dog Esme for over a year and a half now. The spot-on GPS fence uses wireless GPS technology to keep your dog contained in custom fences that you can set up wherever you want. We just upgraded from the first-gen collar, and we wanted to share some thoughts with you in case you're thinking about upgrading or buying a collar for the first time. Last year we made a video on the first gen collar. We go super in depth on setup and training for the GPS fence. A lot of that info is still the same. You can check that out if you want. We had so many people ask some questions on our first video that Spot On offered to give us the second generation collar so we could try it out and help answer more of your questions. We did pay full price for the original first generation collar and we loved almost everything about it, but there's been some pretty big improvements with the new one that are worth mentioning. We're gonna jump into all the improvements on the latest collar. Before we do that though, please like and subscribe. All right, so here are some of the things that we've loved about using the collar for over a year and a half. First of all, Esme is so much happier than when she used to be inside all day, and we have the peace of mind of knowing that she's not going out into the road. Since we've been using the collar, Esme has never tried to escape, and the fence has been reliable at keeping her contained in the boundaries. We've actually been able to turn off the static correction entirely because it's so reliable. But we haven't told Esme that, so. Another one of the most important things for us is that she's able to be outside all day to protect our chickens and geese from predators. Anytime we've run into an issue or needed help, we've always had a great experience with customer support. They've been great for technical support questions, training questions, and they were actually really easy to work with for a warranty replacement that we had to do for our first collar. One of the coolest things about the GPS fence is being able to set up multiple fences. And we can set her up on a small boundary, a large boundary, the entire farm, or really just around her backyard. We haven't had to use it yet, but technically, if we were to take Esme somewhere else, like camping or to visit my parents on their property, we could just set up a new fence immediately wherever we go. Uh, Spot On specifies that the GPS technology has about 10 feet of drift. So when you're setting up a boundary close to the road, make sure it's 15 feet away at least. In our experience, the boundary has actually been way more reliable than that. Esme knows the boundary so well that in some areas she knows like practically to the inch how far she can go. Yeah, every time we get home, she'll go right up to a certain point, even if our car's further and she just like sits there and wags her tail. Here are some of the big changes that we like with the new collar. So my absolute favorite thing that I was so excited for getting this new collar was the fact that you can draw fences with GPS in the app. Previously, you would have to hold the collar and walk around the perimeter, um, which you can still do, and that's still, I think, technically the more accurate way to do it. But we have such a huge property. We had 30 acres of hills and blackberries that we were trying to do. So being able to just like sit in your home and like draw the fence with your fingers rather than like hike through that, which took hours for us, just massive game changer. Technically, it's probably still a good idea for you to walk the perimeter if you have a smaller boundary and you want it to be really accurate. Also, when you're training, you're gonna to wanna to have flags around the edge. So with the new app and the new collar, I was able to create multiple fences, big and small, in just a couple minutes from sitting in my house, which was amazing. This is something that I wished for all the time with the old app and the old collar, and they finally have it now. On the second gen collar, the charging station is a huge improvement. It's actually why we had to get a warranty replacement last time. On the first gen collars, you plug in directly into the collar and over time it got loose. On the second gen, there's a charging saddle. You just drop it into place and it lights up to tell you it's charging. The new collar isn't as bulky and it actually seems a lot tougher. There isn't a screen and there isn't a charging port, which means it's two fewer things that can mess up. So everything is from your phone this time, but I actually think that that's a bit of an improvement because the screen before would get like a chip or a crack or it'd get muddy. On the latest collar, the tracking finally works for us on our farm. They're using a different type of cell service for Gen 2 and it's been very reliable so far. Whenever we wanna know Esme's location, it can tell us within just a couple of yards. And we probably don't need it, but if she were to cross the boundary, it would automatically start live tracking her so we could follow her and find her wherever she went. On the new collar, the Bluetooth works really seamlessly. That was an issue we had with the last collar and it was pretty frustrating. Yeah, sometimes the phone just didn't wanna to connect to the collar and we would like, I don't know, it would just be a little bit irritating, but now it works great. For the new collar, it's much easier to adjust the size. It's not really that big of an issue because once you set the size, you pretty much set it and forget it. But it is nice that this one is a lot easier to adjust. 
The battery life of the first collar eventually dwindled down a little bit with age, but with this new collar, it has yet to run out. Usually we put Esme outside with her collar first thing in the morning and bring her in after dark. And there's always some battery charge left. Because the battery has been great, we keep the collar on all the time and we don't ever have to reboot it in the morning when we put her out, which saves a lot of time. That was one of the things we really didn't like about the first collar. If it had to reboot, you would have to connect to the cell service and sometimes you'd have to go outside and hold the collar up. It was just inconvenient. Here's some things to consider that might be worth knowing. Training your dog to use the collar properly is a time commitment that you need to be prepared for. They say it can take as few as two weeks to train a dog, but with Esme, we ran into a couple little issues and then life got in the way and actually ended up taking us closer to six weeks. Another thing to know is that the cellular tracking subscription is optional. The collar still works perfectly well if you do not purchase the subscription plan. The GPS that the collar uses to create the fence and keep your dog contained is completely separate from the cellular service that requires a subscription. Yeah, so it'll still correct with no cellular plan. You can buy the collar one time, never have a subscription, it'll still work great. So without the cellular plan, you'll always have correction for however big your fence is, but you're not gonna be able to know where your dog is in real time. I think it's still worth it, but the cellular plan gives you a little more peace of mind. We didn't have the tracking subscription for over a year, and we still loved the collar and had a great experience with it. If you're interested in buying the collar, you should at least have half an acre of land so that GPS fence can work correctly. And it goes up to thousands of acres. Any smaller than a half an acre, and I think the reason why they say this is it's just too small of an area. And with the GPS drift, your dog might not have a lot of room. <laughs> they say to keep at least 30 feet between the fence boundary and your home or any other structure. Our house is so close to the road that we actually had to wrap the fence boundary right up against it in order for the house to be within the boundary. But with both the first generation collar and the new second generation collar, it has not been an issue for us at all. So on this collar, the tracking works really well, but a couple times in the last three weeks, we've had false alerts of Esme leaving containment. We went to check it out and she was actually still in the boundary. Not a huge deal, but it's worth mentioning. Fast forward to a couple days after we filmed this and something happened that we just thought was important enough to share. I put Esme's collar on in the morning, but I'd gotten kind of complacent about checking the indicator light on the collar that shows if the fence is active and the GPS connection is good. I just put the collar on without thinking about it and put her out the door. A little bit later, we were going for a walk down the road away from our property. And normally when we do that, we're taking Esme on a walk or I'm taking Esme on a run. It's her favorite thing in the entire universe. This day we needed to leave her, but she followed us to the edge of her fence boundary, hoping that we would change our minds and take her. So when she got to the boundary, she did not hear the warning tone and she decided to test it and she followed us across the boundary. This is the first and the only time in the entire time we've had the fence that she's ever tested the boundary. And technically she didn't do anything wrong because she didn't hear the warning tone because if she heard the warning tone, I know she would have turned around. I'm not sure why, but for some reason that morning when I took the collar off of its charging base inside and put it on her and put her outside, it did not make a good connection to GPS. And I think I would have seen that if I had checked the indicator light. All it took to fix it was to restart the collar, but it just kind of taught me to be more vigilant about checking the indicator light in the morning before I put her out. I think I just became maybe a little bit too trusting and got a little bit lazy about checking. Anyway, it's not something that we're really alarmed by, but it is something that we wanted to share because it's the first and only time that she's ever breached containment. After using Spot On for all this time, we would definitely recommend it to anyone who needs to contain a dog in a large, unfenced area. For our farm, it's been a literal lifesaver since it's enabled Esme to be outside and protect our chickens and geese against predators. And even with the significant cost, it's been a money saver because it's cheaper than building a fence around the entire farm. Pretty much every complaint we had about the first collar has been fixed in the new version and we are just extremely happy with the updates. All right, so that pretty much covers it for the second gen collar. If you have any questions, reach out in the comments and visit spotonfence.com to learn more.